The teaser trailer for Alien Romulus, the seventh or ninth installment in one of my all-time favourite franchises, just dropped and it looks absolutely incredible. To celebrate, I'm going to be breaking down the trailer and giving my own thoughts on what looks to be one of the best films in the series. First off, it's worth noting some behind the scenes stuff. This film is directed by Fede Alvarez, famous for directing modern horror gems Don't Breathe and Evil Dead 2013. There's a reason that these two movies are credited in the trailer and not other writing or producing credits such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. So yes, this guy does have one or two duds under a writing credit, but it's safe to assume that Alien Romulus is not going to be one of his weaker projects, given that Ridley Scott allegedly had an hour-long conversation with Fede about how great this new film is. It's also worth noting that Romulus is set to take place between the first and second Alien movies, which is a 57 year gap. While Alvarez has stated that Romulus is disconnected from previous instalments in the franchise, there is some evidence to suggest that this isn't entirely true, but we'll get to that later. Alien Romulus has a lot of secrecy behind it, with the six confirmed cast members not even having a character name attached to them. The title is also very vague, and I'm unsure as to what it could suggest. The word Romulus is connected to the founder and first king of Rome. If this film was not set between Alien and Aliens, we could assume that it references the film's cast as the first to encounter the Xenomorphs, but that's clearly not the case. There's potential that it could be in reference to either the Engineers or David from the Ridley Scott prequels, as I'll explore later, but do take this theory with a pinch of salt as Alvarez could be completely truthful in saying that the film is going to be disconnected. Of course, Romulus could also just be the name of the space station, but we'll see. So, on with the breakdown. We open on a shot of a Wayland yutani spacecraft coasting past an asteroid field, preparing to regroup with a mothership. A nice detail here is that the unnamed mothership resembles that of the Nostromo, with the big bump on the underside resembling the same breast-like bumps on the Nostromo. This is a really great attention to detail for me, as, in my opinion, the set design for the franchise never got better than the first movie, as it was so intrinsic with the themes of the film, as well as just looking awesome. So this is a huge improvement over the rather generic and cliché spaceship designs as seen in Prometheus and Covenant. The interior likens the two ships even more as we get the weirdly shaped doorways back, as well as the strange stasis pods we see our original cast wake up in in the first movie. I'd analyse these designs further, but I'm saving that for a future analysis of the first Alien movie, so stay tuned for that. On and inside of these pods is blood, with one pod in particular being full of blood, indicating that either a facehugger attached to a host while they were in stasis, like Ripley in Alien 3, or that a xenomorph has attacked the crew before they all awoke. What a great observation, I know. But Fede Alvarez himself said it's a glimpse at a scene that plays very differently to other movies and not just the Alien films. And we know that there are a lot of horror movies that open with characters waking up from a dream or a coma or something, including the first two films in the franchise, so indeed, maybe the violence is coming sooner than expected. What's interesting about this though, is the interior. This looks like it may take place on the smaller spacecraft, as we can see it looks far more industrial and worn out, with lots of orange metal that's even visible on the outside. The space station looks to be far more slick, streamlined and blank in its colour palette, and this interior with the pods doesn't seem to match that kind of design. Just food for thought. We then see a swarm of facehuggers crashing their way out of some unknown red room ready to latch onto what looks like Isabella Merced's character. But unfortunately, my eyes aren't the best and the footage isn't very clear, so I could be wrong. There's a door at the back of the shot too, which looks like it says services room. Going by the general definition of a services room, this is probably for storing technology or resources, meaning it could be possible that the facehuggers were being held in a lab. Whether these facehuggers come from Queen Eggs or David's experiments in Covenant is unclear, but it definitely hints at a very big threat that we're not seeing, as if facehuggers weren't already a big enough threat. This doesn't explain my theory about there being aliens on board both the mothership and the shuttle, but hey man, I'm not here to predict the whole plot, just break down the trailer. Hopefully I get something right. A potential theory of mine is that Fede Alvarez is describing these guys as space truckers like the original cast, so maybe they're delivering alien goods to this space station, which could be a research station, without knowing how deadly their cargo is. But again, just a theory. We don't really see Isabella's character again for the rest of the trailer, so this is most likely a sequence in which she dies, or at least is impregnated. We then cut to our leading lady, played by Kaylee Spaney, as she slowly wanders down a corridor, very much matching the aesthetic of what I'm assuming to be the smaller spacecraft. This is most likely just after she's awoken and potentially found some of her crew dead. 
In fact, going back to the original shot of the stasis pods, one of them is still closed, so this is maybe her pod. We then cut to Kaylee's character, very much aware of her situation and bolting down a corridor with either Spike Fern or Archie Renault's character. It's honestly too hard to tell at the moment. After that, we see multiple shots of Aileen Wu's character, who marches through the ship like an absolute badass and then runs through a corridor in fear. Judging by the yellow door frame at the end and the wiring along the walls, I assume this is the same corridor as we see Kaylee's character in during that initial shot of her and the third shot leading into the stasis room. If you look at Kaylee's shot, there's a white light and mist coming from the end, and in Aileen's shot, there's a dark room with what appears to be stasis pods at the end. Maybe this is a connective corridor from one ship to another, or maybe just a corridor going from one end of the shuttle to the other. I don't know, but it looks like the same corridor. I'm going to assume that this shot of Aileen running is probably in the third act of the movie, where our characters are going to go to escape. You can see later on that Aileen is indeed one of the two characters we see involved with the shuttle's explosion, so I'm going to hold on to this theory for now. We then get a gorgeous shot of David Johnson's character, which doesn't reveal much, but it is a generally pleasant piece of cinematography. I've seen people speculating that he may be a synthetic, and there's definitely some weight to that idea, as one of the final shots shows that the facehuggers, even when next to him, have no interest in him. I'm assuming that this is Johnson's character in the background anyway. We also see in this shot that Aileen Wu's character gets attacked and attached to by a facehugger, with another shot showing probably that same facehugger being removed, though it's most likely too late, so expect a chest burster to dig its way out of her chest sometime towards the end of the movie. I'm also assuming this takes place during the same time as the previous facehugger chase in the trailer. And again, Isabella's absence here really makes me think that these face-clutching freaks are going to write her out of the movie. I also think that this gorgeous red lit shot of, again, who I'm assuming to be Isabella Merced's character is set just before the facehugger chase, as it matches the interior of the room they come crashing out of. I'd just like to apologise if I've got any of the actors mixed up. I'm not very good at identifying faces and such, so feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. We then see a helpless couple floating around amidst a lot of debris, most likely after the ship explosion, which is probably going to be a failed escape attempt. It's possible that this is Kaylee and Aileen's characters too, having to get back onto the space station and avoid being sucked out into space. I'm also going to assume that both Kaylee and Aileen are our final girls, with Aileen being taken out by a chestburster that probably bursts a xenomorph we see Kaylee so afraid of at the end. Maybe some others will survive, but it looks like it may just be these two that actually go to escape aboard the shuttle. And it also looks like Kaylee is holding a plasma rifle here, which is most common in expanded media, like Aliens Fireteam Elite, but it does get mentioned in Aliens, so there's a nice bit of continuity there. Now, let's get a quick look at the Xeno before I summarise my thoughts on the trailer. There's not too much to go off, as it's shown with an extreme close-up, but it kind of looks like it has a patterned dome, similar to the Xenomorphs in Aliens, rather than the clear translucent head of the big chap. Fede Alvarez has also commented that we may be seeing something new with the Aliens, which is obviously being kept under wraps, so we have that to look forward to. So, as for the look of the movie, I think it looks excellent. It certainly looks like it's going to be a tense movie with plenty of surprises to come. It nails the aesthetic of the previous entries in the franchise, specifically the first two movies, and it looks like it's going to be using practical effects a lot more than Alien Covenant and Prometheus, which was one of my biggest hopes for this film, as the overuse of CGI isn't really what I come to this franchise for. I'm also so glad that the teaser trailer doesn't give too much away. Remember, a lot of my comments here are purely theory, so take them all with a pinch of salt, and let me know what you think is going to happen in the comments below. Also, let me know your thoughts on the trailer as a whole. Do you think it looks like a good movie, a bad movie, or somewhere in the middle, and why? Thank you for watching, my name is Mr. Greaves, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.